Just to push the cord. I already did. Praise the Lord again. We thank God for being here. As we go into the Word of God this morning, we're going over to Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. We're going to start at the first verse. Again, we thank and praise the Lord for being here today, thanking God for the opportunity to stand and to be able to bring forth His Word, for His Word will bring forth life into our lives if we allow it. First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, beginning at the first verse. Furthermore, then, we beseech you, brethren, and exalt you by the Lord Jesus, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please God, so ye would abound more and more. May the Lord have a blessing to the reading to the hearers of his word. And as the Apostle Paul begins to write to the Thessalonians, begins to write that we ought to please God. We ought to be favorable unto God. For I want to become a vessel of honor and not dishonor. And so, so many of us, we're trying to abound more and more. We're trying to grow. We're trying to uh, be that man or that woman or that young boy or that girl that God can use in this life. But the only way that we're going to be able to be used is that we please God. God uh, deserves to be pleased. He deserves uh, uh, to receive glory and honor. Jesus said, I come to do the will of him that hath sent me. I didn't come to do my own will, but I come to do the will of God. So many times we come and we find ourselves wanting to do our own will. We want to work it our own way, but, but God has a plan. He has a standard. God has what we would call steps in order to uh, please him. He's called us to this way of reconciliation that we would reconcile the world back to Him. Would we come to do His will that, uh, uh, that we might please Him and that we might abound more and more? The second verse says, For uh, we know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, even your sanctification. Folk don't want to be sanctified. But the word comes. God comes that he might sanctify his people. Set his people apart just for him. We want to be in the world. And then we want to be in the church. But that's not how it goes. God wants us to be separated just for him. That we could use. That he could use us for his purpose. And not we for his purpose. Did I say that right? We want to use God, praise God, amen, for the things that we need, but instead of doing the will of God, that God may bless us and that we may abound in God, we in turn say, well, now that I'm here and I committed my life, I'm not doing anything else, so God, I need you to do this, this, and this. But the Bible clearly states for us to seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness, God's righteousness, not ours, because the Bible declares again, it says, our righteousness is as what? Filthy rags. We have no righteousness. Our righteousness should be hid with Christ. We should be covered under the blood of Jesus Christ, that when God looks down, he sees Christ. God looks down and he sees what we see. You know what you see when you look in the mirror. You see doubt, you see proud, pride. You know what you see, and then you know what you see in others. You see how others conduct themselves, and so you say to yourself, if that's a Christian, that's not what I want to do. I want to find myself being separated or sanctified for God, <coughs> that God could use me and that I may abound. No longer do what we no longer do we need to drag 
our cells, our filthy cells in the church, amen, and just say, well, he's going to take me anyway. That's not how this works. He wants us to be separated unto him. He says, sanctified that you should abstain from fornication. Fornication. We still in the church fornicate and talk about, uh, 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 don't judge me. But you already judged through the scripture that you're committing fornication. You're committing fornication with everything but God. And that sounds kind of strange. But, but what you're doing is you're, you're, you're loving other gods. You're making yourself available to other things in this life, but not for God. It says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and in honor. So here he's talking about abounding. Then he starts talking about being sanctified. Then he drops uh, the F-bomb and says fornication. We're still committing fornication. We're supposed to uh, serve no other gods but God. But what we do is we come serve God on Sunday and then on Monday and then on Friday and Saturday night we're serving somebody else. We're serving our flesh. A form of fornication. Uh huh. We're supposed to be married to God. God is supposed to be our lover. <clears throat> so we're supposed to know how to, how to possess our vessels in sanctification and in honor. Not in the lust of concupiscence, which is desire, our desire, even as the Gentiles which know not God, mm -hmm, that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, because that the Lord is the avenger of such, of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. Here it is. We can't fulfill the lust of our flesh, concupiscence, the desire. We have we have our desire is greater than the things of this world than it is for God. Mm hmm. We don't desire God. We, we don't desire to go. We say we want to go higher in God. But really, do we really want to know God? Do we even really want to know Him? What is God's attributes? What is God like? We put on a good front, but what happens when it comes down to our fasting and our praying lives that we can really know the voice of God and hear God? What we become is we become a people of uh, 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 ear ticklers. We, we, we want to go that someone may tickle our fancy. And so if they tickle our fancy, then we're good to go. We can't decide to, dis, dis, uh, decipher whether or not it's the voice of God. Why? Because we have not been in his word. Jesus come and he said, I'm speaking the words of my father. They're not my words. So when we hear the true word of God, we say, no, that cannot be so. But we have not read the word of God. We haven't been in the word of God that our desire to be is to be a vessel of honor and not dishonor. God is calling for us that we would be a people called of him. For God hath not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Holiness. That's a cuss word in some churches. That's a cuss word. Holiness. Nobody want to be holy. See, the, 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 when we look at when we look at Hebrews ten, it talks about uh, how the priest would go into uh, the, the, the 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 offer up the sacrifice, and then the high priest would go into the Holy of holies, he offer up the sacrifice uh, for the people unto God. And when we look at our lives, we can't even, amen, go into the holies because of the life that we lead. God is calling for a people, a holy people, a holy nation. God wants people who's going to uh, uh, surrender their lives for his. For God has not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. Holiness. Let's go over to Leviticus 11 and 44. 
Come on, let's time travel. Leviticus. He said, uh, the Old Testament is dead. It ain't dead. You just want it to be dead because of the sin in your life. But it ain't dead. Ah, it's so much. It's living. It's breathing. Amen. Praise the Lord. Levit Leviticus 11 and 44. And it reads, For I am the Lord your God. Ye shall therefore sanctify yourselves, and ye shall be holy. It's calling for us to be a holy people. He says, for I am holy. Uh -huh. For I am holy. God is holy. He says, uh, neither shall ye defile yourself with any manner of creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. And so he's calling for us to be a holy people. We're supposed to be holy in all manner of conversation. Some of our conversations is nasty. The life that we live is corrupt. And we still want to call ourselves a holy people of God. We want to call ourselves sons of God. We cannot be called sons of God unless we become holy people of God. So, uh, again, 1 Thessalonians the fourth chapter, the eighth verse, and it says, He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but God. So he, we are, as he began to relate or begin to open up to the Thessalonians that if you want to abound in God, if you want to please God, we have to be holy. But he says that those that despise the word, you don't despise man even though you think you do. You're actually despising God. That's the word. You're despising God. He says, but God. He says, who has also given unto us his Holy Spirit. And so if we're supposed to have the Spirit of God, if we're supposed to have uh, be the people of God, we're supposed to have his Holy Spirit. His spirit uh, is not grievous. His, his spirit don't lie, cheat, and steal. But we're supposed to be a holy people unto God. How do we become a holy people unto God? By doing His will. By accepting Jesus Christ as Lord and personal Savior. He says, but as touching brotherly love, ye, touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you. For ye yourselves are taught of God to love one another. We don't really know what love is. We say we love, but we don't know. Our Sunday school lesson dealt with forgiveness. When we forgive, when we love one another, we can forgive one another. Is that right? It says, and indeed ye do it toward all the brethren which are, at all, which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. We're to increase in this thing. We're to go higher in this thing. We're to learn more about God. Lord, the disciple says, Lord, increase our faith. Increase our knowledge. Increase our wisdom that we may do your will. That we could love one another. That we could have respect for one another. Increase it. But we don't really want to increase. What we want to increase in, increase my pay. Increase the things I have. Yeah, I want more and more. But when it comes to increasing in God, we really don't want to increase in God. We don't really, uh, uh, there's a song in the church we sing, I want to go higher and I want to go deeper. Right? That's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't want to go higher in God because going higher in God will cause us to have to love our enemies. Going higher in God will cause us to get rid of the pride and the self-will. That's when you're talking about pleasing God and being honorable unto God. All we have to do is go back and, and, and it doesn't take rocket science. It just causes us to go back and see how in the book of Acts how the disciples carried themselves. Whether it was back then or right now, they carried themselves as people of God. They carried themselves as, uh, as Christians. It says, and that ye study to be quiet. 
and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we have commanded you. See, some of us, we're busy bodies. We're in other folks' business. But he says, study to be quiet, to shut our mouth, do our own business. Our job is to do the will of God. Jesus said, I come to do thy will, O God. And so if we really call ourselves Christian, our job is to do the will of God, which is what? That all men should be saved. It says that ye may walk honestly toward them that are without. <laughs> Here's the mind blower. That we all want to be called the children of God. But it can't be that way. There's a separation. God has created us, but we don't become the children of God until we're adopted into the family. Woohoo! We all want to be called the children of God, but we're all are not the children of God. But here he lets us know, he says, that ye may walk honestly toward them without. There's some folk that are not in the church, and we still want to call them brother and sister, and, and that you can't do that. So he says, those that are without, we must carry ourselves honestly to those that are without. What are you saying, my brother? What I'm saying is that we lie, cuss, and cheat, and then we tell folks that we say, and then they think that that's the way the church goes. That's not how it goes. There's a separation between the people of God and the world. Though we're in the world, we're not of the world. We don't have the characteristics of the world. We're honest before God. We want to please God. And we're holy people of God. We're not just any old people. So there must be a separation mm -hmm, between us and them. That's, isn't that all right? That we may walk honestly before them without. That means everything we do, the world is watching. That's why Jesus came back and told his disciples. Now, those that are disciples, here it is. That you're supposed to be the light of the world. A, a, a city set up on a hill. Uh huh. That the world may see. The world can't see it. you in darkness. And you wonder why. Well, why they can't see the light of Christ in my life? Because you ain't living a nickel worth of nothing. They can't see nothing. What happens is, is you come here and you shout and you want to be all happy in the Lord. But when you go on your job, when you go back to your neighborhoods, folk can't see no light. They don't see Christ. We just read, he said, be holy. There's a standard between that which is holy and unholy. Then he says that ye may have, that ye may lack, have lack of nothing. We won't lack anything. It says all your need. God will supply all of our need. Is that right? According to his riches and glory. Isn't that what Paul said? And so when Paul says he'll supply all your need, David said, I once was young and now I'm old, never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging bread. God is going to provide for his people. But you know how we got to cut and steal. We got to lie. Oh, I just lied for peace sake. That's not God. That's not being honest. Oh, you know, uh, uh, I had to lie. I lied on my time card. The Lord understands I need to pay my rent. No, the Lord understands that you need to be honest with those without. That we may draw, amen, the world in. How can we draw the world in and we live in nasty and raggedy lives? Because they're going to say, well, if you do it, I can do it. And I ain't got to go to church. And then you wonder why nobody want to uh, pattern themselves after your life. He says, but I would not have you ignorant. A lot of us were ignorant. Brethren, he says, concerning them that are asleep, that are, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. That some folk have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also would sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, 
that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall, shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Then he says, Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. So there's a standard in life that the saint must follow. There, there, there's a standard in God that God uh, requires of us. And so the disciples write to the, to the Thessalonians that in order to please God, in order to abound more and more, that we have to be holy people of God. We have to be sanctified set apart for the master's use. See, back in the days of old, sanctification or being sanctified was a bad word. They would point fingers at folk and go, oh, those are the sanctified folk. And so today, everybody uh, say that they sanctified is not sanctified. They're not set apart. Let me say it like this. Can God use you to do his will and to do his work? Are you available that God may use you yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you available? Can, can God count on you? Can he look down from heaven and use you? Because we, uh, as dull tools, need to be sharpened. Uh, we need to be sharpened by the word. We need to be sharpened in prayer and in fasting that we can withstand the wiles of the enemy. Because when the devil comes in... Even though the scripture says stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, we don't stand still. We hightail and we run and we say, I can't do this and we don't hold on to the horns of the altar. But I declare to you that we can do all things through Christ. We can withstand the dark days that comes in our lives. Why? Because we have to stand. If we trust Christ and we believe him, he requires of us that we keep his commandments. Come on, somebody say amen. He requires us to keep his commandments. If we don't keep it, it the, the scripture says, if we love him, we'll keep his commandments. So uh, when you love somebody, it, it becomes, uh, that person becomes uh, the apple of your eye. It becomes you know them, you build a relationship. How can you build a relationship with someone that you don't know? But we love God. And so by loving God, we want to please God. That's what this is all about. Pleasing God. Because we can't please man. Is that right? He said, no matter what I do. What they say, you can't please everybody. You sure can. But we can please God. And then the Bible declares that when we please God, it is that he would even make his enemy, our enemies at what? Peace with us. So we have to remember that in this text, it calls us for us to have growth in our life with God. And in order to have growth, we have to set ourselves aside for God. We have to abound even more in love. We have to know how to possess our vessels unto holiness. We have to understand that we're not going to fornicate ourselves with the things of this world. But we're going to be true unto God. Why? Because we want to be called the children of God. And in order to do that, we must be a people holy unto God, separated unto God. That is our mission in life. And so if your mission is not to serve God, but you have a desire, well, now you have that opportunity. You need to present yourself before God. Allow God to mold you and make you through the word. Take on the spirit of Christ that we may live a holy and a separated life. For the Bible declares, I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, you present your body a holy sacrifice, a sacrifice holy unto God, is which is our reasonable service. So with that being said, our prayer and our desire is that you would go on, amen, to meet the Lord. That you would go on, amen, and separate yourself unto God. And say, Lord, take me higher in you. I give up all of my life unto you. Be the captain of my ship. Here I am. I want to do thy will. 
oh God. So we thank the Lord for the word on today. Amen. We thank God for all of his goodness and his tender mercies for our desire is to do, amen, the will of God. So we thank the Lord, amen, for the word of today.